Hello everyone, welcome back to chapter 10 about gases. This is going to be part 3 and we're going to continue our discussion on the simple gas laws. And in this particular section we're going to talk about Charles Law. So Charles Law says that the volume and temperature have a direct relationship. So if I increase one of them, so volume, then the temperature is going to increase, okay? And so if I increase the temperature, the volume increases. That's the kind of easier way to think about the relationship. But it's true both ways. So a volume of a fixed amount of gas at a constant pressure, because the other two things have to be held constant, increases linearly when you increase the temperature in kelvins. Remember, it's got to be in kelvins. So anytime we're doing T, we're talking kelvins. And remember, that's C plus 273. All right. And so since these are directly proportional, then mathematically, that means that V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Or T1 over V1 equals T2 over V2. Now I tell you this way and this way because if it's asking you to find the temperature, it's a lot easier to start out with the temperature on the top. So you can flip it, flip it real good, that's what I say. All right, so since it's directly proportional to the absolute or Kelvin temperature, we increase the temperature of the gas we speed those molecules up, which increases the kinetic energy. And then as we increase the volume, that spreads the collisions out over a greater area. And so Charles Law, um, at, at different points, different amounts, okay, if we keep that um, pressure the same and, and the what we're going to see is that we're going to increase in volume if we decrease the temperature and vice versa. Okay, so again, I just show you this because this is in the book. All right, so this is a really cool phenomenon. And, and like if you take a balloon and you have it at room temperature and you put it in ice water, literally that balloon, because it's elastic, will shrink or you can put it in the freezer even. And then if you put it in hot water, it's going to expand again. And that's because of the way the collisions inside the balloon are. If you warm them up, they're going to um, have more frequent collisions and they're going to hit with greater force. So that's the molecular kinetic theory part of this, okay? So in Charles' law, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2 or T1 over V1 equals T2 over V2. You can write it either way as long as you keep them both with that same, um, that the, the same things. The ones and the twos have to stay together. All right. Don't forget that T has to be in Kelvin. Always. Always. Okay. So I'm going to take inventory. Um, a sample of gas has a volume of 2.80 liters at an unknown temperature, okay? So that means that T1, I don't know. When you submerge the sample in ice water, so T2 is 0 degrees C, its volume decreases to 2.57 liters. What is the initial temperature in Kelvin and in degree C? Okay, so I have, I've, I've got liters here, which I usually have, um, have the volume in, but this temperature is in Celsius. I have to change that. So T2 is going to be 0 plus 273, which is 273 Kelvin. That's the same as 0 degrees C. So now I have my T2, my V2, and my V1, okay? I always start out with writing the initial formula and then rearrange it. If you, if you just kind of run in there half-cocked, sometimes you will make an error. So I, I, I 
always do this even though I've done it you know forever so I'm going to write this since I'm solving for t that t1 over v1 equals t2 over v2 and then I am solving for t1 so you can do this one of two ways you can go ahead and rewrite your formula to solve for t1 so what that would give you, and remember you're going to cross multiply or divide by or multiply by, right? You should remember this from algebra, that T1 is going to be equal to, when you do this, the stuff that was already on the other side stays the same, and whatever was on this side is going to be the opposite. So if it was on the bottom, it's going to go over here and be on the top. So your... Um, it's going to be T2 times V1 over V2, and that's going to give you your T1. Or you could go ahead and put all the numbers in and then rearrange for T1. It's totally up to you. Whichever way works the best that keeps you from getting confused, okay? So, sorry, T1 is equal to T2, which is 273 Kelvin times V1, which is 2.80 liters, divided by V2, which is 2.57 liters. Liters are going to cancel. They're going to leave me with Kelvin. So when I put that in the magic calculator, I am going to get 298 Kelvin. And then if, if I want it in degree C, I'm going to have to say 298 minus 273. And that's going to give me 25 degrees C. Okay. So I'll give you practice. And that is Charles Law.